So the streets keep asking me, does your body really have issues breaking down meat? If you ever wondered that or ever heard that, this is the video for you. Hey guys, my name is Michelle Anita, Sarah, Talia, Jazz, Marquita. I'm a physique. You already know what this is. It is Trey Honda from Physique Set. And today, we're gonna tackle the old age myth. Does your body really have problems breaking down meat? So, where does it even come from in the first place? In the 1970s or in the 1960s, that's when they founded PETA. And PETA, the whole purpose of them, is to save animals and save the planet. What they did, they did a lot of fear mongering tactics to tell you, hey, why you should go a little bit more plant-based or vegetarian, make sure you're not releasing a whole lot of methane into the air. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that because of a vegan and vegetarian diet, just to be real with y'all, they're doing a lot more monocropping. And that is going to be a problem because now the soil is not as nutrient dense anymore because they're over tilling. So look, this is not a video to tell you not to go vegan or vegetarian. If you want to protect animals, it's totally fine. Just make sure you know exactly why you are vegan or vegetarian. But with that being said, I'm going to break down the science as to how your body actually digests food. When you first put food into your body, your body has receptors to pick up what food you're giving it. And your body's gonna release some enzymes to help break down this food. When your body's trying to break down protein, it's gonna use proteases to break down protein. If your body's trying to break down fat, it's gonna use lipases to break down fat. Any type of sugar or any type of glucose or carbohydrates, it's gonna use amylases, all right? Now keep in mind, we have salivary amylases in our mouth. So when our body picks up, hey, this looks like bread, hey, this looks like gummy bears, it's gonna start releasing salivary amylases to break it down. So as you can see, when your body is picking up the signal, it knows or it's not gonna even allow things to sit in the gut unless it can't break this thing down. Stay tuned for that. Once it gets to esophagus, it's gonna go to the stomach. Now your stomach is gonna be very acidic. So the only thing that could really make it through your stomach is gonna be foods that are dense in fiber. Hmm, I don't think any meat has any fiber in it. But if your stomach is acidic enough, and a lot of people nowadays, because they're taking a lot of PPIs, which stands for proton pump inhibitors, such as Pepto-Bismol, right? Or things that lower stomach acid if you're dealing with heartburn or acid reflux. Now a lot of people's stomach is not acidic enough to break down a whole array of foods. So keep in mind, your stomach is so acidic or supposed to be so acidic, it can literally melt still. So you need to keep your body intact. And in order for that to happen, you gotta give your body the right type of ingredients or the right type of amino acids to make your stomach acidic, such as, I don't know, histamine. Let's be real. So once your body is breaking down this food through a process called peristalsis, this is basically like this jellyfish movement. It's gonna turn into something called chyme, C-H-I-M-E. Now the food is broken down to its molecular point. So now your body can start absorbing this food. Keep in mind, protein by this time, when it reaches your small intestine, is broken down. There is not gonna be no protein on earth that you're giving your body that's not broken down until it gets to the small intestine. But once you get to the small intestine, after the stomach, then the proteases come out, and now the lipases come out, your gallbladder is releasing bile so it can break down the fat, and now in the small intestine, your body can actually start absorbing the amino acids, the lipids, and start absorbing the glucose. And now there is some things that you ate along with the protein that your body cannot break down. I don't know. Maybe it could be some vegetables. <laughs> Maybe it could be some corn. Maybe it could be some nuts. Why? Because it got a lot of fiber in it. And even something like corn. That's why if you ever had Chipotle, and then after a day, you actually checked your stool, and you see a little bit of corn. I'm not trying to throw y'all off, y'all. <laughs> but that's why something like corn is called a show food. Every nurse and every doctor knows your body cannot break down corn. It's even passing through your stomach acid. Or if you have an elostomy, you're going to realize that they tell you, hey, these are the certain foods we don't want you to have within 24 hours. And you realize it's predominantly veggies. It's not really fruit, it's veggies. Why? Because veggies are so fibrous that some of this fiber your body cannot break down. Think about it. That's why we tell y'all to have more vegetables because a lot of people have problems with consistent 
bowel movements. So if I'm having some veggies and fiber acts like a net, right? It's gonna help create mass in your gut and it's gonna help push out all the foods. And believe it or not, when you are pooping, you're not pooping out meats, eggs. You're pooping out fiber and bacteria coming from your gut. That's what your stool is made out of. That's why if you ever tried a low carb diet and for some people who don't really understand the concept of a low carb diet because they don't have a coach, they're just eating nothing but meat. They're kind of like doing a carnivorous diet, right? They realize that, wow, I used to poop all the time, two times a day, but at least one time a day. But now, since I started this low carb diet, just eating nothing but meat, I don't poop anymore, why? Is there something wrong with me? No, it's because this protein that your body break down, it don't even reach the colon. That's the part where things are getting fermented. That's the part where your body cannot break it down anymore. Now your bacteria in your gut got to break it down. So that's why when you have something like beans, what you have more flatulence, you fart a little bit more because now your gut bacteria got to it and now it is fermenting it, which means what? Now it's creating gas and this gas got to go somewhere. So when you have more fibrous foods, that's when you start to notice that I have to poop more and flatulence more. But when you're eating more meats, you realize that I am not going to the bathroom as much because there's nothing to poop out on the end. Your hair, your skin, your nails, your enzymes, your immune system, everything that just named is made up out of protein. So everything that you physically see, that's protein. Now, your hormones, your body needs fat to make your hormones. So that cholesterol that was taught that cholesterol causes heart disease, it's not really that cholesterol, y'all. It's not the cholesterol coming from your diet, by the way. Cholesterol is the backbone of majority of your hormones, your pregnolone, your aldosterone, your testosterone, your estrogen, your progesterone, anything that ends with an own, your adrenals, needs cholesterol to back it up. And we only get cholesterol from fat-based products or fattier cuts of meat. So does meat really rot in your stomach? No. Unless your stomach acid literally is at the level of seven, which basically means it's a base, your body is breaking down that meat every single time. That's why you don't see nobody pooping out a whole entire egg. That's why you don't see nobody pooping out a whole entire steak. But if you have some corn, but you have some cauliflower, but you have some nuts or seeds, you're gonna see it in the stool sometimes. If you're on a low carb diet and you notice that you're not pooping as much, once again, there's nothing wrong with you. It's just not giving your body nothing to really excrete. It's really that simple. Have more fiber. This is not a video to tell you stop eating vegetables. Eat more vegetables. And you probably realize that the days that I have a cheat day, you use the bathroom in the next three or four hours. Why? Your body is saying, hey, we don't like this thing that this person just gave me. And this is causing a ruckus inside my stomach. Let's just excrete out our system. So your body only poops when you gave some things that it cannot do nothing with or break down or B, you gave me too many of the worst type of calories, processed calories. And we're trying to get this out of our system as soon as possible before it caused more inflammation. It's really that simple, all right? So hopefully that ends that myth. That's your reset tip of the day. It's gonna be stay snatched all the time. Know the summertime. Talk to y'all soon.